Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Shaft Podcast. So, um, for our listeners, um, this is just a gentle plea to you. We are currently on our way to reaching 5,000 subscribers by your massive support and appreciation. Um, there are also lots of you out there who view our channels every single day, but it's left with that extra step of clicking the subscribe button. So please do that so you don't miss out of, on any of our amazing episodes as well. So let's keep the numbers growing. The target is to hit 5,000 subscribers in, in the next two weeks minimum, right? So let's hope we are able to hit it and then we'll be back with celebrations with, with you all. Um, so this episode is, is mainly just to catch up with the debate world, touch base with the debate world, because I mean, the shaft, um, we've had several debate discussions. All our discussions are still very relevant within the debate space, but for some time now, we've not really gone into the sporting aspect of it in terms of discussing a few tournaments, a few strategies here and there. And we also know that debates evolves, right? Every now and then there are new things popping up and there are new experiences. And so in this episode, we just want to discuss um some of the trending stuff um myself and erasmus has returned to active speaking after a very long sabbatical and then look at the competition we attended some of our experiences and then try to have a much more integrated discussion around returning from long breaks and then eventually also unlocking new levels within debating and so i'm really really excited because not just do i get to talk about debate again but also i get to steal some things probably erasmus doesn't tell me a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, so Erasmus, what, what, what should we expect? What are your thoughts on this one as well? Yeah, I, I like this topic, um, mostly because I think it's very, very relevant to a lot of people. Um, uh, not a lot of people are very lucky to get to be very, very consistent. Um, yeah. And sometimes you just need to take the step back, but knowing what debate is to a lot of people, you sort of always have the inclination to come back to want to do something and there's not a lot of material out there that tells you what exactly you need to do where you yeah. are how to up with the changes which are happening so um i myself i don't know what was going to come out but i hope it's good <laughs> yeah 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 and i mean you 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 return with a banger right you returned into with 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 a trophy um, at IIT Bombay, um, the online version, which was your second time of, of winning that trophy. So tell us, how, how, how is it so frequent that you become king king of the Indian world? <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw Shoyes post. Uh, <laughs> it was Shoyes trying to cause trouble for us. No, but yeah. I, I remind that it's both of our trophies, we both won it. So we don't get to the last year. But... No, I I love I love that tournament because like I think it features the very best of the best, yeah, uh, within within Asia and then especially within India. And the debaters over there are very 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 smart. They are very very smart. Yeah. So it always makes for good debate. So, and I think it's also a new audience that we don't get to frequently engage because um, uh, we debate within Africa and the um, in our circuits. So. Yeah. It's always refreshing to see how your ideas test up to new judges over there, how new speakers are able to respond to these things. And fun motions. I think both versions have been fun. Yeah. Um, before we delve into the competition itself, how did you feel like um, after staying out of speaking for a long time? Because, I mean, maybe the last time we spoke was somewhere in November or early December. But even that, like, I spoke with you, we didn't take the competition that like that rigorous um, putting a lot of effort to us more like, yeah, we need to keep up within the debate circuit. And so we found um, competitions to just debate at based on the schedule and, and how available we were. And so how did it feel coming back to a stage where, first of all, it's tough. Secondly, you are defending champion. So the expectation was probably a little bit more. And this time round, unlike the previous time when we won, where we were on a hot streak, winning competitions this time around we had been out and a lot of us were feeling extremely rusty the funny part is we hadn't put in any serious training in fact zero training up until the day of the competition because we didn't have the time so how did it feel like your expectation of yourself going into the competition and and how you try to navigate your way through it i mean you said it yourself i felt i felt very very rusty 
very very rusty like even putting <laughs> sentences together <laughs> was hard like when do yeah. i even approach the emotions from and like you know we, we don't speak about it a lot but like sometimes it, it can affect even your confidence right like going in I know, going right. in, um you you are not even sure which teams are there and how to prepare yeah. them. and people are getting better each and every day like the different yeah. especially because of online is bridging the gap so it's getting yeah. super TV each and every day and you because of your past history you don't want to go there and then go and mess up so <clears throat> it feels like <clears throat> sorry it feels like there's a lot of pressure on you but what, one thing yeah. i don't um especially after belgrade you know i don't think about the pressure anymore like i didn't even yeah. know we were defending champions none of that <laughs> stuff bothers me like for me it was like yeah i was excited to come back as like I wanted to feel that competitive edge again, feel like I was trying yeah. towards and I wanted a new challenge. So I was just like looking forward to what new challenges every round going to throw to me and how, how would I be able to yeah. respond to it. So I, I wasn't thinking much about the pressure of winning, about how exciting I, I, I couldn't care less. And I think that also helps because I knew yeah. uh, it was just, it was a pass through tournament just to, get back into the mood especially as we are preparing for hws to kick start like um our real training so um, yeah, yeah that's yeah. how it was for me yeah i mean for for me i was i wasn't pressured i was just unsure how it would go because um like you said people are getting better and i'm so bad at not knowing people's names so i do if i look on the tab i won't even recognize i don't know whether they were at the past competition or i met them somewhere before like i've, I've been in rounds with people and then later on i'm meeting we met you in this round like bro i, I i'm so yeah. sorry but i don't remember That's the arrogance of the champion. <laughs> Anyway, this is this one is not arrogance of any champion <laughs> somewhere. This is, this is just this is just unfortunate character trait. <laughs> That's all that it is. But yeah, I I really didn't know um like who had become better, who should you be scared of, or who should you be alarmed by? And also the first round just it was like, bro, like really we are rusty. Because the first round, <laughs> the first round the prep was one of the most longest prep times we've had. Because, like, there's barely anything to talk about. And then the feedback after the debut clearly shows, how did I miss this? Like, yeah. was the speech that bad? Like, yo, you just could tell that you've been out of the game for long. I mean, in a way, we both weren't yeah. totally out um, of the game, if I would say. Like, like I, I'd been judging CA in a lot of tournaments. And I think off the back of not going to Vietnam, I, I sort of just made a resolution that I want to get involved and help as much as possible because I yeah I really don't know how much time that I have left within the bit. So what once I still have the yeah. time, I help and because of that, um, I was still seeing I in a lot a lot of tournaments. Once I have the yeah. time, I pick it up and and do. And also because of Worlds this year, it was important to get very much involved in the bit. So it, yeah. It, all of those in your more to the judging side, not to the speaking side. So I, I yeah. didn't think it would be a big change, but it actually was because um, yeah. when you judge, it's, even though it's a bit more challenging, it's you can also get pretty comfortable in terms yeah. of up trying to um, think thoroughly about. Because like I just sit down, and yeah, put up, listen, and, uh, yeah, yeah. I can, I can say that's better. But when you are actually presented with the motion to oh. work for two minutes, <laughs> I that it's a different conversation. Yeah. And I think for for some of us like you and I who for a period debated a lot, what we would consider a long break would be very short for some people, but would massively be make a difference for us because you remember there was a period where we used to speak almost every weekend and even if we're not speaking every weekend we're training and so there was always effort improvement listening to speeches training practicing doing spa rounds and i i I was telling someone that the longest debate break i've had without doing tournaments is actually from it sounds silly but it's actually from (laughs) that that november (laughs) to to the um 
to this month when we did I, IIT Bombay, right? No, even before before November, we hadn't done. Yeah, we hadn't spoken. So the November one was like one incident where we decided to yeah. speak at a competition. Yeah, I think so it's like last year, throughout last year, we just had like the second half of the year. Yeah, yes, the second half of the year, we just did nothing at all. Um, and even the beginning of the year was mostly myself at attending like uh, in person. Yeah, in person comes. Yeah. yeah. And the only online yeah. comp with it was Sophia, a couple of others. I, yeah. I remember us getting to the finals in all of those ones, and it was mostly yeah. like, ah, yeah, like we want to come back, we want to be consistent. Um, but yeah, yeah, um, just the it, it felt, it things. felt so long. It felt yeah. so long. Yeah, so you never and get back to the rhythm. That's that's the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you 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 never get back. So to be very honest, when we did the first round. I never like I thought it was going to be a very long competition because I, I felt <laughs> you know, if if this was how I was feeling at round one. Nah. And and that's a funny thing because I'm I'm still in debate, right? Like my work is debate related all the time. I'm in debate. And generally I have debate related habits, watching and listening to podcasts, reading random news, listening to someone analyze something and picking up ideas and thinking about some strategy about some 2019 debate round and all that. And so you have the debate in your mind. And I think a lot of us underrate how much of a physical activity debate is that you need to get into the physical of it in order for it to merge with the mental aspect for you to get the results. Because if not, there's a lot of things hovering around mentally, but if you are not physically in rhythm or in sync with the with the with the state of the game you would mess up big time <laughs> like yeah. it would escape you because the feedback we got in round one they are all things like yeah i think about these things every day in fact i thought about them during the prep why is why are they not appearing in the speech yeah you know what like i was not bothered i was not i was not i was not bothered at all where i remember when we were getting the feedback from the, the judges i was like yeah, yeah. I was I was not I was not bothered at all because I knew that yeah. like the kind of feedback that was being given was not feedback which was structurally saying that we were bad. It was just that kind yeah. of feedback that you get that says you need to speak a bit more. Like, yeah, like, exactly. It's, it's in the basics. So I was like, ah, thank God. Like it's it's not like <laughs> oh you were missing the debate or not doing. Oh like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I get that. you. So like I was, I was like, mm, yeah, we'll be fine. Like this, this is no mistake. I'm gonna do twice. And for I think for us, one of our biggest strengths, um, which I'm, we've spoken about this before, is that we are able to adapt <laughs> within rounds and debates. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's that's what makes us so dangerous because we are not the team that maybe like if we are in worlds, you say, ah, oh, these guys are going to win. Yeah, but. We <laughs> we can but, pull up a surprise on you. <laughs> yeah, and it's not because like oh we are not consistent or anything. It's because yeah. uh, the level of the, the level of challenge determines our level, and we're able to pull yeah, ourselves it's true. to that level of challenge like consistently. And it's not noticeable. Yeah. But for example, last year I was saying every tournament we attended, we made the finals. Yeah. Like we added yeah. Liverpool, um, LSC was no was it LSC? Yeah. Yeah. Imperial or, or LSE or UC mm, Sophia, Sophia online. We we made up finals in all those competitions, but yeah, like it's it's not like we're we're making a statement like yeah you know, yeah, out yeah. there getting like fifteen over fifteen, winning top speaker anything. But if you put us in the room, we are going to pull us. We'll be there. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I always bet on us. I always bet on us. Yeah, and I think now the experience, the composure, the the maturity to understand the the debate and its technicalities, nitty gritties here and there, um, means that, and that's one of the reasons why we're so like eventually comfortable in IIT because I don't think we needed a lot of energy. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I don't think we needed a lot of energy, right? It was more of just getting into the physical rhythm because mentally we were there, like we we were there in terms of the growth, the capacity, and all that. To be honest, I don't even think we touched like ten percent of the rust. I still think we're, we're very rusty. Yeah, because, true. Because true. I listened, true. To, I listened to the final. I've listened to the final a couple of times. Listened to some of the rounds. Yeah. 
you're like, uh, could have done this better, could have done this. And yeah, and, and that's the thing. If you realize where we try to, um, given our, our genesis, how we try to approach yeah. people, which is beyond deniable. Like, don't yeah. even go there to go and prove arguments. Second, yeah. Don't go there to go and prove arguments. You you just want to um show the truth. Make a strategy that wins. Like yeah, I just want to make it so obvious that you've won yeah, you've at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think like the World Cup, especially the semifinals and finals, they, those were yeah. 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 But what it was funny though, like we kept on getting opening up from round five through to yeah. quarters, semis and finals, I think. Which no, it was, it was it was semis and finals, round five semis and finals. And I was like, yeah, I, I know, but who is doing this? <laughs> who is unfair to the other teams and, <laughs> and kept on putting us in, in opening up? Because, like, sure, I, it's very challenging to be in opening up, to be fair, because there is equally a lot of things to do in that, in that role. I, I feel like people say it's one of the easiest roles to win from, but I think it's so because you can do so many things from that role. And if you if you mess any of them up, you are losing. So in as much as it comes with some form of tactical advantage or for imposing yourself on the round, there are so many areas you need to cover to impose yourself on that round. And if you don't do that, anybody can just mess you up. And and it felt like a part of me just wanted, I just wanted to be closing for some weird mm-hmm. reason, just mm-hmm. to do some shaky from there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was it was fun being opening up actually because because yeah. the LO speeches I gave like I was really happy. Yeah, best final speaker for a reason. Um, hey. <laughs> no, but I I think I think what um, when I think about opening up compared to like the other teams, I think what you yeah. need to do is, is clear. Like for me, it's so clear. Like yeah, because the thing with structurally government teams can't avoid the problem they need to address it yeah problem. and most of the time but you can <laughs> yes no, most of the time they see it they see it things when they are setting emotions try to propose change the structure of motions yeah. is always that there's a proposal of change so whether you know about yeah. the change or not you need or to not enough of it defend it yeah to, to defend it and you just have that to stick by opening opposition has three things they can do they can deny that the problem exists <laughs> they can agree that the problem exists but but propose a different solution <laughs> but propose a, a different solution or they can just yeah. even agree, agree with your solution but say that time it, yeah it doesn't work the timing is bad a couple of reasons yeah. so, so the the wide array of things that you can do from there just makes it so yeah. easy just it's it's more of how do you say like it, it plays sort of like a more defensive role, so it's yeah. very very easy, which is sort of like my thing because like I like responses, challenging the person, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's that's why we we do all so much in opening, like in opening of position, yeah. even though both of us are our favorite positions are closing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I started liking opening up because of, and it's probably for the same reason I like closing. Is because um, I don't get the one. I'm not the one to speak first. For some weird reason, if I'm in opening gaff, I like opening gaff for the opposite reason. I'm the one to set the tone, so I get to dictate where it goes, and I can meander my way around creating weed out all the useless things I don't want to fight about and center it around something small. But in, in opening up, usually the mental game is trying to predict opening gap. Mm-hmm. And if you realize in the semis and in the finals, that's what we're doing. And mm-hmm. it was so funny because it was on point prediction. Mm-hmm. Like, in, I think, was this, it did start from round five, the debate about religion. Mm-hmm. Remember when we were in prep, the prediction was that Gaff would come and make a case about why religion is bad and it gets weaker on their side because it is no more an interventionist god and so right from prep our first argument was to prove why religion is much more powerful and in fact far more dangerous and repressive on their end so we were sitting there and then pm started speaking and then started analyzing all the negatives of of religion and how terrible it is and how repressive started explaining why religion would be weaker on their side i was like 
good lord i don't know where i slept but i'm so happy i woke up this way <laughs> <laughs> we just went there and said look we agree with all the harms you mentioned we just want to point out that will be worse on your side yeah so <laughs> this proved why religion will be worse yeah I, I remember i remember when we came onto the space and we used to lose a lot because of that like, yeah. you know, yeah. we, we, we usually took the debate to the opposition and people were not used yeah. to that. Especially people who were judging us were like, no, 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 no. You are supposed yeah, to... Yeah, you need to respond to them. Yeah, yeah, like you're supposed to respond yeah. to them. And so they say religion is bad, you say religion is good. And religion like, is good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why, why, why do we need to say that? We need to... Like, it, it's sort of people expected that dichotomy and then we just go and say, yeah, yeah we agree with you, but you are the reason for it. And and like yeah. we just kept on kept on loose until we just sort of try to refine that strategy as much as possible. It still sometimes puts us at a disadvantage. Like when yeah. we, we try and um flip arguments, flip statements. But I think in opening opposition it works so much because um unlike in closing opposition, um because and that that style usually helped us in closing opposition a lot. But yeah, you know, I like yeah. doing it in yeah. the because then you force yeah. all of the rest of the debates to sort of engage yeah, yeah. So, so yeah i think that the fun part is really getting to listen to them in real time and actually adjust to make it seem like you predicted them so mm-hmm. in that debate obviously i predicted opening gaff about the religion thing but i found more reasons from their own speech when they were speaking about it just yeah. kept on listening kept on writing the reasons and i was like ah this guy <laughs> He just handed me all the ammunition I needed. Yeah. And usually when that strategy works, what it makes it sound like is that prop was silly. Prop was yeah. silly to think that like they were going to have it that easy. Then you make yeah. it sound like this was all this was obvious. Why did you miss it and all that? Yeah. Which which is fun. But you know about this damning statistics about winners of WDC. In fact, at Vietnam, I think all the categories were won by opening opposition um for the past I, I was doing the calculation for the past six or seven years all the wdc's that i can recall i'm sure there's even way more have been won by open oppositions at least the open category results that i can recall like how structurally biased is opening up within the world of debate and and should we start being alarmed by it because we want to give people a fair chance as much as possible but it seems like one particular rule is creating an unfair advantage and if you're in a grand final and you're not opening up then maybe you're not winning yeah i mean uh unless uh, we we are in og and then like, <laughs> get motion like that in a grand final and then oh still wins then i'll be like yeah there's a bias in that. <laughs> no but no I, I don't think so i don't i disagree i disagree i think yeah what what we don't realize is that the margins are becoming very 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 close um like it, it's not like it was really that wide but these days like everyone is good everyone is good so yeah. um, every advantage begins to count and debate is going to progress yeah. to that point where every advantage on motion knowledge position everything is going to count yeah. but i think more and more this the skills which are required to win in opening opposition are way more appreciated than the skills required to uh-huh. win in other sides of the house i think that's what's causing the well, one of the things that's also causing the trend so let me speak on them one one the first yeah if teams if teams are super 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 close then it always yeah. means that opening teams are going to discuss the basic things they're going to yeah. analyze very very well which means that there's not a lot to add to the debate when you're coming from closing right and even if yeah. you can add the question the judges are always asking themselves is eh, well how important was that over what was being said over here? What's, what's the specific trade-off? This, these teams have done their job. They've done it to the best yeah. of their abilities. Do I take away everything that you've done? Then the, it leads to sort of an over-scrutiny of extensions which have come. How much yeah. of the, the opening speech did you put yeah. in there? Yeah. How, how much of it did you go away from uh, to the extent yeah. that it's, it's shafting or, or that sort of thing? How much did you have to rely on their mechanisms to prove the kind of things that that you said is because it's not like oh, closing teams have not been good we've seen some very very good teams come from closing and still couldn't win yeah. and we've still seen some teams going closing and then show us how it's done just like yeah. busted. it's like case in point i think korea 
where um it's in Pulich. In a debate yeah, that's the semis. Semis. yeah, in a debate that's yeah. is exhausted by opening, just came from closing and just pulled the rabbit out of the head, which means that uh not to say that now it's open, but like there's some talent, there's something which is required yeah. for you to yeah. win those kind of positions. So if, if debates are really, really close, then small natural advantages can look like they are very, very big. Case in points, what well, yeah. I, I just mentioned in terms of when you are coming from opening opposition, it's just a variety of ways to disagree. It's just sometimes being yeah. able to the reality and say that this is the reality. Like, don't mind yeah. whatever they are saying, this is the reality. Then yeah. the second thing for me, like I was saying, motions require change, which means that yeah. um, most of the time, government teams are given a burden to defend things which do they have an idea about even if they do not have an idea about it they still need to defend it even if they do have an idea about yeah. it it needs to be exhaustive in in a in a way and it's very very hard to push change like we have like huge status quo bias within ourselves so <laughs> people are very very convincing we are more likely yeah. to just you know what i'll just stick with with what i know and um, so that can be a, a small factor but can be amplified um at, at that stage yeah um, the last reason I, I, I just forget, because I think um, I mentioned it at the, at the start of the speech, but um, yeah, I, I just forgot. I just forgot. I just forgot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, the one that's also becoming very, very stressful is the closing one. Because it, it, beyond the opening up, probably the opening up one becomes an issue when it's in grand finals. The closing one becomes an issue throughout out rounds where it is almost statistically impossible to break from closing, right? And I mean, you are pointing out that, that these, um, these, these margins are becoming closer and closer. I'm like, yeah, but Charlie, does it mean that you are now at the mercy of the draw rather than the mercy of your own abilities? Yeah, and yeah, your yeah. Own talent, yeah. Right? I just, I just even remember the third one and I think it still plays a role over here. Like, the skills yeah. which are being prioritized these days is engagement. Like a lot of people prioritize individual engagement and trying to just turn the like respond specifically to things which people have said. Like, there's a lot of yeah. prioritization now on um framing and just being able to move debates into your world. So if you are an opening up naturally, you engage. Like naturally, yeah, you are engaged. Yeah, yeah. You engage. And if you are engaging sort of like the, the best material within the room and you're able to analyze it yeah, very, very yeah, yeah yeah the rest of the teams the more the issues are coming out the less yeah. they are able yeah. to engage everything so you just seem to have That's done true. your work more because judges now expect you to engage every single thing i remember even in the final like i thought like with our case we are winning convincingly i'm not going to chase like every individual uh. Because yeah. I realize teams do do this to us a lot, like especially as for some reason, when they get there, they just like throw like a lot of arguments out there. For yeah, us. yeah, yeah. And yeah, we are the team also that we are very lazy with responses. Cause like <laughs> we, we, we like responding with a case than to respond yeah. with an individual battle and all that. Yes. So so um that that's that's what it takes as the debate is evolving. The issues for you yeah. to engage with are, are a lot, and just identifying what is key to engage with, to flip, and to be convincing about your case. Yeah. Because these days, it's not even enough that you have a good case. Can I have a good case? Yeah, it's, it's, it isn't. It isn't. It isn't. Yeah. The meta aspect of debating is is becoming more and more like winning defining than than the content or the knowledge or mm. the case that you have. And I, I was telling someone the other time that a lot of people have, have very bad information utilization skills within the debate space. People have information, they throw out there into the case and you are listening to them and you're like, how are you just throwing out this information without using it in this way and that way and that? Like, give it to me, give it to me. Sometimes I listen to people in my closing and I'm like, oh God, <laughs> if, I, if I had this piece of information, what I would have done with it? The, the round that gave me that was the Hogwarts final last year. Um, we're sitting and then I heard closing government making this case about the fact that, because you know I've still not watched the, the Harry Potter movie, so media. But, but the, the CG was making a case about 
how I think the war eventually happened or something, something like that. And I was like, that piece of information is an entirely new framing that pivots significantly the way in which the debate will be judged. And it's becoming a problem as well, which points to what you are saying, that these days people are, are not using information in very, very interesting ways. And so opening teams are gradually getting an advantage because once they say the obvious things, it's like, closing teams are, are are gone right yeah yeah i'm not i'm not even yeah. trying to be an old head here but i think debates used to be a bit more exciting when like <laughs> teams could come in share like new ideas like people literally had mm-hmm. pieces. people literally yeah had exactly exactly on topics that they were presenting like i like this this was in 2020 or 2021 just when debates had gone online where there was a debate yeah. about work from home um yeah we had lucia um uh ten, um and a couple of others in there and yeah. the case the case that Lover the cases are just uh, like the that's, that's, the that's, education that's what, materials that's what <laughs> like was running that's what researchers are now running now in yeah 2023, 2024. so like and these things like we used we used to hear them from people people who were just reading ahead these days there's yeah less less prioritization for the depth and the richness of information and knowledge that you are presenting yeah. and more as to so someone just comes and says oh uh they are gonna <laughs> fill in their logical gap that comes and be logically prior <laughs> to war because you yeah exactly yeah, like exactly you, did you prove price? Did you prove this? Way. <laughs> they didn't weigh. They didn't weigh. So that's it. They're out. And I'm like, yeah, like that's that's uh, nice. But where yeah. where from the fan? Where you like you are beating people yeah. by just showing yeah. them that yeah. you understand this topic way more yeah. than they do. Instead of small yeah. tricks, small tricks like uh, yeah. You know, because if if you if you I don't know. Maybe I'm, my identity as a speaker has also evolved because I've been switching roles like these days, um, doing second speeches, doing first speeches. But when I was doing first speeches for a very, very long time, I was the type of speaker who liked to read a lot and take down notes. And so I had case files, like detailed written case files, not just jotting down ideas and not just jotting down some facts. It was me, I get the fact. I craft it into an argument. I write out the argument and write out every possible impact I can think of. So when I pick that case, it's like someone's thesis I want to steal <laughs> and then I'm using it in the debate. And I used to do that a lot where in debates, I used to run very, very robust, detailed cases because the amount of information I was throwing in there. But then you have to evolve with the standards, right? Like now, if you are throwing the information in there and you're not spending time weighing, uh, what, mechanizing, you'd lose the round, you'd be fourth. And so the very trends is sort of asking you to evolve. And these days I look at the evolution and I'm like, okay, maybe it's because I now understand the system more. But a part of it is not because I understand anything. It's simply because the requirements of the sport to convince judges have changed and you have to change with the times, right? Like, and and if you look at it, people like, um, someone like BNI, who is very, very content heavy, very, very innovative with his cases and will teach you something new almost every single round. He will probably not prioritize this way in and impacting. And so if he doesn't have a partner who does that for him, he will be penalized all the time for, for some of these petty, petty, petty requirements, right? And and it's making the sport a bit a bit weird in there. Yeah. But yeah, it's 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 been a nice conversation around these. I, I just want to ask you, per your experience, now that you've you've managed to do one competition out after your <laughs> your long sabbatical. What do you think people should be looking out for when coming back into into the debate space after these long breaks? Because I mean, now every now and then people have to take them because of life. So, yeah, I think even before, like you go on that long break, you sort of know you're always going to come back. So the first thing is keep tabs, keep tabs, know what's going yeah. on, be involved in some one way or the other. Like I don't know, unless you're just taking a break to get away from like the toxicity of the debate space. <laughs> then you should try and um, keep up as, as much as possible. 
just <laughs> toxicity of the debate space. <laughs> not saying forcefully interact with anybody, anything, but be watching tabs, what motions are yeah. presenting, who is even winning in the first place. Yeah. Stuff like yeah. that, just keep keep being interested. But the second part is more into like getting back into rhythm. I think um it is very important to keep an open mind and um, knowing that uh, your advantage is not in preparation uh because you can you can prepare obviously like i think maybe the second point should be that prepare before going to the tournament yeah. just have some time to don't, catch up. don't be like us yeah have some time to catch up <laughs> even, even as we do that like like even before tournaments like we we catch up like even on the mornings do some warm-ups yeah like yeah sometimes just sit down and discuss motion stuff prep a motion yeah yeah so so do those things just just to get in rhythm Third thing for me is mentally. Don't panic. Like you set too yeah. much expectations for yourself. Most likely, if you're taking a long break and you're coming back uh, this way, because if if you were coming back to come and dominate and everything like that, most likely you wouldn't have taken that break. Run on the break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so, it means that you need to keep an open mind and be very very humble. Because that's that's the thing people lack. Like people, there are people who let you think they enter into every bit and they should win. They are like when, when, I should win, this, yeah. when I was going into this round, I didn't think I'll win, no, but no, after no. the round, I think I should have won. And then yeah, like they lost, and they're like, ah, yeah, because the pe- other person didn't say anything. Be very humble. You don't know what's winning, what's not. So be very humble, be, yeah. be very, very open to learning. Because what I've discovered is that sometimes all the preparation people make is like it doesn't matter. As no, much as, as much as because you are the performance. Yes, we are preparing based on what you think should be the thing. But every tournament has yeah. its dynamic. I, you know, I always yeah. say this that every tournament has its yeah. spirit. People say, yeah. "Oh, why does this person keep winning this kind of tournament?" I say, "Every tournament. Uh, I'm not trying to be like yeah. spiritual or, or <laughs> religious or anything like that. But every tournament has has its its spirit. It's that, it's dynamic. Yeah. It's, it's culture, something like you no. Know, when you talk about um, Glasgow, Glasgow ancient, it, it has yeah. it has its thing. Like there's something people. If you talk about HWS, it has its thing. Yeah, yours is to identify what thing does this tournament have, and it's defined by who won previously, which people attend. That that sort of what narrative surround this yeah. tournament, and and that's what's going to uh, flow throughout. So it's about you now tapping into it and. Even as you are within the tournament, the people who have come there, there is a gravitation towards what they all believe in, what they all think should yeah. be the right way to be it, things like that. So you need to be getting a lot of feedback, what the CAs themselves, because like yeah. what do they prioritize, what standards do they set within the tournament. So you need to be getting a lot of feedback, a lot, to speak to everyone. So, you know, after debates, we, we are always like chasing the judges still today. It's become a habit. Yeah, yeah. Chasing the judges, saying that. Um, just share your thoughts over here. And when they tell you, they tell you a lot about yourself because, you know, the yeah. thing with debates is, it's funny. Um, someone was telling me, I was, I asked, um, I, was it Yanko? Because, like, Yanko yeah. has been to the highest stages uh, yeah. of the yeah. movie. I was like, how do you, because, like, everyone is good. Like, when I hear them, yeah. I'm like, yeah, exactly. They like, all, all should have won. And it's like, mates, like, even, yeah. even the best even the best debaters don't do the correct thing all the time because yeah, they have yeah. you have to make trade-offs in a debate. You have to make trade-offs. Sometimes you weigh more. Sometimes you weigh less. Yeah. Sometimes you respond yeah. more. You respond less, depending on how the round is going. So people are choosing different strategies at different points in time, and yeah. that's what makes everyone beatable. And there is a prioritization of what then judges begin to want. So it's by speaking with them and getting as much information about yourself, about what they are more worried about in, in that time. That's what helps you to now keep on filling the gaps and then to, to get better. So for me, yeah. you need to be very, very, very humble um, to, to learn and learn from everybody. Because like, you never yeah. know. Like The judge who is just sitting in the corner as one of the panel members may have done so well, they are going to promote them yeah. to the next to chair. Room chair yeah. and you'll be there and they just pop up and you are like oh i should have learned what this person likes because yeah believe it or not what people respond to as true is is also um 
based on it's very powerful yes. very very powerful yes it's also subjective to their environment and their basic yeah. beliefs and things like as much as they would like to admit it or yeah. not yeah i mean at the end of it all we are all humans we we, that's why we we at its core core debate a subjective sport because exactly. people are persuaded by different things and the different things are the things that define them right um, but I, w- I was thinking about this um, in the sense of feedback as well which is something I just want to put out there I've seen people be terrible at utilizing feedback and you and I have been victims of this and after that I learned my lesson at Belgrade remember what we we're doing was because we were so intent on like doing well within the competition, what we used to do was after every round, and we we're getting so many seconds. I think second throughout was so annoying. Mm-hmm. We're getting so many seconds. So we'll go to the judge, and then they'll tell us things they thought we should improve. And then the next round, we would work on those exact things and prioritize those things. And then that round, probably that wasn't the things we were supposed to prioritize. So we'll get another second. We we'll go to the judge of that round and then they'll give us another list of things that they think we should work on. And the next round, we are going to work on those things. What we're doing was applying feedback from rounds in the wrong way. Because we're essentially picking feedback from one round and just jumping into the next round with that feedback. But it's not always that the feedback from that previous round fits the nature of the second round that you are going to do or the subsequent round that you are going to do. And just like you are saying, there are some rounds you have to weigh more. There are some rounds you have to weigh less. There are some rounds you have to be very heavy on mechs. There are some rounds you can be very little on mechs because it's so intuitive and everyone is fine. And depending on the motion in the previous round, maybe you needed to weigh more. So the judge tells you, I want to hear more weighing, blah, blah, blah. And you could have maybe analyzed this one less because it was already convincing. You pick that feedback, go to a motion in the next round that demands less weighing and more mechanization. And what do you do? Do more weighing, less mechanization because of the feedback that you got from the previous round. And we're doing that where we transition, we pick one feedback jump into the next round without asking ourselves, does this round require that feedback that we were given? Or we ask ourselves, is this round having the same factors, the same characteristics of the previous round that would make the feedback suitable? And once I noticed that it made me very cautious. So for instance, in Vietnam, I used to tell people, don't jump into the next round with this feedback I'm giving you because it may not fit. You, You just need to be careful and know which round is similar to this round that we just had for you to apply that feedback. If not, you'd end up, and if you'd remember in, in Belgrade, we're playing catch up all the time. Every single ridiculous round, we're playing catch up. <laughs> we, mm-hmm. we miss out on something. And we are like, it, it was so frustrating because these are different judges, same tournament, and every judge is telling us to focus on something different. And once we pivot and focus, whatever we shifted attention from, the next judge says, oh, you should have focused on that one instead. We're like, yeah, you guys are just playing us like table tennis, hitting us left and right. Where exactly do you want us to focus? And that fed into the frustrations of the competition. It took a toll, a huge toll on us because I've, I've never felt so tired than I felt yes. in that competition. It's my worst. It's my worst. Never so tired. My, in my worst is Korea in terms of how crashing it felt. But in terms of physical tiredness, Belgrade was the worst. Because you remember after every day, the second round, I used to take a nap, like a power nap for like two hours before I can even wake up and catch up on how the day went. So that's just my take on feedback, which I think is really, really important that people understand the context within which various judge feedbacks work. I just want to add one more. Because yeah. I, think, I think the first problem is that most of the time we don't know how to ask for feedback. And I don't mean us. Like yeah, judge. that's so true so true i feel that as a as a judge like when you judge tournaments and if if you're judging like tournaments every week um most of the time by the time it's monday you need to go to work and like you're yeah. already stressed you have like lots of requests asking for feedback and i do my best god knows that like to give feedback <laughs> within the round just to and yeah, let everyone super. understand this yeah is exactly I, I understood from the debate this is what i expected from everyone and this is it yeah and if you have any questions ask me so most of the time people ask immediately and i'm able to give some answers so i expect that if you are coming after the round maybe even the next day and you are coming to ask for personal feedback or whatever 
you'll be very specific on what you're looking yeah. for. Because imagine spending yeah. all that time to, because my always tend to take longer and I'm not proud of it. But yeah. you, you, to come after and then it's like, oh, can you give me some feedback the, from the uh, round? Like, yeah, the exact same thing. It's just short time giving the feedback in the round. <laughs> so, so, the, so most of the time, if you just want something, like you, you want the judge to be this like professor or this magician who just discovers something with yeah. you and then tells you, ah, I can see you don't do responses. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then you just go and like, oh my God, that was it. And then I'm going to do responses and I'm going to ah. do no, no, no. Yeah, it's, it's not the way, to work. The way debate improvement is, it is, you are the builder. You are building, your building, not the judge. Yeah. So you need yeah. to know, you, in fact, you need to know what went wrong. What area, exactly. And now you For are the now. the judge to help you. Yeah, exactly. So you are now asking the judge, this thing that I'm building, is it making sense? Do I need to adjust? What's your yeah. thoughts on this thing that I'm yeah. building? And that's where yeah. feedback will become relevant. People don't know how to ask yeah. feedback. They just, and that's yeah. sometimes so hard to like answer these these questions about feedback. Yeah. So the judge is just going to send you something and just say, oh, way more. Oh, do this thing more. Yeah. And send you yeah. something very, yeah. very generic. And you go ahead, yeah. copy everything that you've done and try yeah. to change it. And you're like, oh, this judge says, yeah. no, it's not working. Doesn't yeah. know what you've been working on the judge doesn't know yeah exactly what is exactly. highlighted so sometimes you're even like mm, what do you think was the most important impactful argument within it? if the judge points to something either than what you thought should be the most important argument from yeah. your side you're like okay this is what i thought should be oh okay i didn't get that no 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 i think that argument yeah. was good but it didn't have so and so and so and so like okay yeah then I'm going yeah to work on that. yeah Instead exactly just saying give me feedback or someone was like, it's true. I want, I want pe- what you gave me feedback as I want personal <laughs> feedback as hello. What do you mean by personal feedback? Like, <laughs> like so yeah, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's like you look at it and you are asking, um, judges generally give very, very generic feedback. And I've had a problem with people who don't follow up and ask specific questions. So if a judge tells you, you needed to mechanize this more, what does that mean? To what degree? How how much mechanization? And those were some of the mistakes we were making in Belgrade, which I, I, I look back on, I'm like, yo, this thing pains me. Because how much mechanization is enough? Because you, you mechanize and mechanize and mechanize and someone tells you, oh, the rest of the mechanization wasn't necessary. You could have spent that time waiting. Okay, give me a measurement. How do I measure? How do I determine? Right? Mm. And sometimes these situations are even just one-off situations. It's not your typical nature to be under-analyzing, but maybe in one round, you under-analyze something and the judge gives you feedback on it. And then we pick on it, and then for the next three rounds, you are over-analyzing things pointlessly because a judge said in a one-off round, which is one thing I think we should look out for. I don't want to shame you, but I remember there was a round (laughs) where you, you you framed for like three or four minutes. Uh, well, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. like because the previous round the judge had said what well, something around the framing wasn't enough and, and and something like and i was like that's so terrible application of of feedback <laughs> and these are some of the lessons that <laughs> there are some of the lessons that we learn that we need to talk about and a lot, a lot of people don't i always tell people if you go to a church and you ask for feedback ask them how do you think I could have done this? Because when they say like mechanize more, usually you think you had mechanized, right? So I'll point out, oh, when I said ABC, I thought I had mechanized to this degree. I said, oh, I needed mechanisms to prove one, two, three things. The mechanisms you gave proved two. I needed the last one to prove it. And that's okay. Then I know that it's not the volume of the mechanization. It's really what burdens I needed to prove within that argument that I didn't satisfy. And someone will say mechanization and my interpretation of it was I needed to give three and or three more reasons instead of the two reasons I gave, right? Mm-hmm. And that gap in interpretation of feedback itself is one that people should want to bridge more by asking much more specific questions and asking the judges to some degree illustrate how you can improve or what exactly they were expecting to convince them. Because you remember we did this with the likes of Jason, um, Pranav. We used to ask them, how do you think we can do this? And then they would give you an illustration. 
assuming you said abc it could have fixed this and that and that and then you know okay now i clearly understand what what was expected of me right yeah um so finally let's talk about people who hit development ceilings within debate and this would be like the, the last 10 minutes of our conversation um I don't know whether you've experienced it before. I think you have. Um, I mean, you've had two spells. You've had two spells in debate. So obviously, you, you hit it the first time and then you had to break through it to come through the second time. I have had it. It's not been so pronounced. Um, the only time it was so alarming was during the training period for Akofana. We were getting very terrible performances in training all over the place. Um, because I, I felt I'd hit a ceiling. Like, I was thinking about ideas. It wasn't coming. I was trying to move on, trying to unlock a new ceiling. It wasn't coming. And a lot of debaters in the modern world face that, especially the upcoming ones. And you know, as an upcoming debater, the gears are so, like, they come so frequent for you to unlock because the development is also going very, very fast now. And if you don't take care, you would be there. You know you are supposed to move on to the next, but you don't know how. Right. I've had two people talk to me about that in, la in the past year. One of the world's finalists in, in Vietnam had that problem and we were discussing it throughout last year about how to find the next level to unlock right, and how to get onto that next stage. How do you think debaters should approach this um, and what has been your experience about this also? Yeah, like it's, it's a problem that I've, I've experienced myself and I've uh, having trained a lot of people, I've also seen. Yeah. I think the very first thing to to do is understand what exactly the problem is, because you are yeah. still likely going to call a lot of different things, like a developmental freeze. Most people translate it as, "Oh, I reach semi-finals and I'm not able to get to finals," or "I go to tournaments <laughs> oh, and, I, and I break and I'm not able to go <laughs> forward." Like, yeah, yeah, people have different chance. People are like, yeah, like, like, I'm not able to speak around some of these topics. I'm not able to speak like this. Like, I just want some, they just feel like they've worked for so long or they've been in a space for so long. So they should just have this like big explosion beyond yeah. where they are. And it's because, it's because whenever you keep on working, 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 and you make a breakthrough. Yeah. That point of breakthrough is is nice, but yeah, it's a there's a level at which the feeling or the sorry, the, yeah, the goosebumps that you have from wow, like you remember the yeah. first time we go into the semi final, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. LSC Open, like we are like yeah. we're in an open final, bro. That's it. <laughs> And then you remember Dog Switch, Dog Switch, when we got into yeah. Open Final, we we're like, Yeah, we are in the final, we are done. Yeah, we're See, done. Do whatever I want to the final. Yeah. We are done. <laughs> so, so they got to a point where we're like, Ah, no, why are we not winning? Why are we not breaking yeah. first? Because, like, so, so for me, the first thing to understand is that develop, development is gradual, it's yeah. going to take time. And that even though you had your breakthrough, what count amounted to that breakthrough is yeah, increasing development or increasing application of what you know to be true or what you know and believe yeah. to be the problem and you providing a solution to it. So the best yeah. analogy to use for this is when you are cutting a tree, like you keep on hitting with the axe or sometimes yeah. like it doesn't immediately fell uh, the, the tree or it doesn't mean it was the right English word to use for the tree, but <laughs> it's the constant hitting. And it may appear like yeah. you are not making any impact, but there's a yeah, point yeah, 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 yeah. Break, the tree falls. Yeah. The tree falls and it comes with ecstasy euphoria. So when you start approaching the next thing that you want to do, you almost expect that, yeah, I've approached this, so it should immediately start working for me. It's not. It's not. Yeah. You need to find and navigate your way around it. Start looking for different ways to improve. Start looking for different things to apply to your game. Um, yeah. So just recognizing that it's going to be gradual, it's going to take time, that even the process yeah. of finding what to improve is going to take time because there are some times yeah. where we're just looking for things to improve and then we stumble into something and realize that we're doing this so well. Like there was a time yeah. I just did, don't, didn't do well with economic motions, but I was not aware of it. But I was looking for different levels. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then 
one day I just entered into economics r- rabbit hole and I came out and I was like, I, I want to speak like Bro. this guy on economics. <laughs> exactly. And I just started following, watching economics debates. And does it mean other parts of me were deteriorating? Probably, yes. So now I go into debates yeah. and I'm like, ah, nah. But over time, you, I, I hit that point where... You balance out, yeah. I, you, you balance out. So sometimes when you're even focusing on one thing, it means that the other things your focus is not on this so much. So the first thing is understand what your developmental phase, which you just passed, was. Maybe you are still in it. Maybe yeah. you are still in the mode of applying it and using it yeah. well. May, maybe you are just fatigued. Maybe just trying yeah. to look at something new it means that you are leaving out something else, which is now causing you to take thoughts or whatever it, it is. Yeah, yeah. The, the dynamic. Sometimes you are training within the same circuits. People are used to seeing what, what, what you do. Yeah. So there are a couple of things which I'll suggest. One, speak to people. Speak to different people about, about debates, about just try and understand them. Try and get into their heads. Even, even if you can't speak with them, yeah. try and observe them. What are they doing so well? And pick something from them that you want to try and get better at. It helps. Yeah. Two, go to new places. Because my experience with training, especially where the environment we were in, was that there was a small pool of judges. And over time, yeah. when you, you're debating with them, they form an opinion of you. And it's sort of... Yeah. Very, Stick very with hard. it. Yeah. So you realize yeah. that when you... Go to Akofina, you made the final. It didn't matter whatever. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. go to different places. Uh, debate over there. Because what the school you are thinking is so outmoded and you need you go somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. You go this somewhere is, and it's actually <laughs> enough. Because you are tired Yeah, exactly. Of, I got tired yeah. of winning. winning at, there were tournaments I just don't attend because like, like <laughs> you won too much. Ew, like I got so tired because I'd try to win, try to win, then I won, then I won. Yeah. Then I was like, so the last one I went to, I was just like cruising. So yeah, just go some go somewhere new. Like try try yeah. something yeah. It, it can it can also um really really help. Uh also yeah. sometimes you need to take a break. Sometimes it's just about taking a break because the goal of improvement sometimes sends you down a rabbit hole. And you don't yeah. see anything else but that. So sometimes just taking a break, yeah. taking a step back, enjoy life. Because for me, I don't think it's just reading that teaches you about debates. There's this conversation life. that we have yeah. about life yeah. and maturity. Yeah. It teaches yeah. you a lot. About a lot. A My lot. experience working a in a multinational organization is teaching me a lot about economics, about those kind of debates yeah. than I ever yeah. would. So, yeah. I'll say that just sometimes go and live. Sometimes just go into the world, go and live. Talk to different yeah. people who are outside of the debate bubble on different topics. Enjoy life. If the debate is becoming too stressful, shut down a laptop, take a break. You'll still be fine. Yeah. But always keep in mind that yeah. I'll be coming back, which means that every other yeah. thing we're doing is almost sort of geared towards what can I learn from this? Come what can back. I yeah. apply um, from this? And and because when I was, yeah. when I remember when the major reason I couldn't stay within debates was I had so many commitments and I had commitments, especially also in church. What I was doing was, I was like, no, how can I apply my intellectualism within this space? Listening to a lot of Christian apologetics. And now they started talking about logic, rules of logic, things to do, started talking about different books. So I started reading um, some of the books that they were trying to fight against. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Learning how the arguments are being made on both sides, learning about them became very, very, very powerful later when I came yeah. back. Just the the freshness of ideas that I was bringing. So yeah, um, there are many different ways to approach this. Yeah, for for me, the only thing I would add to this is that people form a false sense of exceptionalism when they get a breakthrough to a different level. I think that's really crippling in ways that you cannot understand because. One thing that has helped maybe you and I a lot has been that we are very conscious of our own strengths, even when we are winning. People barely think, like you were just saying, the final speech, you've watched it. I went to watch it and I was like, okay, this speech was good, but I noted like three, four things I think I could improve in there. Somebody watches that speech if they had won and they would idolize the speech because it's a winning speech. People tend to associate winning with perfectionism 
And that is bad. That's a false dichotomy. Because the fact that you've won or the fact that you've unlocked a new level that has given you some wins doesn't mean you are the finished article, right? And so instead of people being conscious of themselves and knowing that, okay, I've gotten to this new level, what else do I, what I, whatever I unlocked to get to this new level, fine, I've unlocked it, but there's something else I need to improve on. So what else do I need so that when I'm ready to unlock that next level, that comes in handy? Because if not, whatever, whatever, what do you call it, um, tickets or, or credits that that new level gives you, it burns out very quickly because people will catch up. People will catch up and it will burn out very, very quickly. And once it burns out, you'll be found wanting because you are now like, now I don't know how to unlock. Because we are not cognizant of ourselves and we celebrate new levels as if we've reached and we are perfect. Yeah. Like nobody's perfect, man. So yeah. Just for people out there, be conscious of where you are. Even when you unlock a new level, there's always more levels for you to unlock. I, I don't know if there's still still time to add this, but I think what you're saying yeah. is, is very, very true. Like I had, you were there when like we had nationals and a team yeah. won by deciding to not take pure wise. In the debates yeah. that it was quite clear that we, we were winning the debates, decide not to take pure wise, give a lot of responses and just take advantage because it was a national, just take advantage of yeah. the charging situation. And they were not penalized for it, like nothing of yeah. that sort. And they won. And then one of the speakers just decided, okay, that's it. I'm not going to do any debates again. Yeah. Why? Because they've got to a point where they cannot fall short yeah. from there. I think it's the it's how you view yourself. If you begin to think, okay, I'm finally there. I've been trying to reach here and I'm finally there. And therefore, I don't want to fall ever again. Which means that now you start taking thoughts or you start losing someone and you get yeah. so mad. And, Hungry, so yeah. and then you decide not to engage anymore. You start saying things like, yeah, I think I've hit a developmental piece. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. You need to expose yourself to the grind. You need to go yeah. back like the the way in which the reason why like I never grow like people oh like yeah I I never get to the point where people are able to sort of like surpass is that no of course like yeah. of course I still do well but you never see yeah. me like oh this guy used to be so good it's because I always think of myself like I'm still in first year I always yeah. never think beyond that like if you beat me yeah. I need to find a way this guy is not too small I need to find a way to beat him this guy is not too big. I need to find a way to beat them and consistently yeah. improve um, um, within that metric. I, I think it's super important to to um, yeah. um, have that view of yourself to always want to improve. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks so much. I mean, this has been it's been so packed, so loaded an episode because we've talked about so many different things, and and I I know whoever has listened to this has really really enjoyed this episode as well. And like always, it's always fun having you having these dual conversations because like the synergies they're bouncing off ideas uh, on off one of um, each other and, and all that. So it's been super fun having everyone. This has been for the debate culture and linking up with the debate space. I hope you enjoyed this one. Erasmus, any last words for, for our audience? Yeah, shout outs to everyone. Please continue to subscribe to the podcast and expect more things from us. Yeah, always, always. And always remember you are in our hearts. The debate base is always our home. And we would always keep touching base with you guys with a few ideas and a few advices as well. So we all get to learn. Um, keep up and see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.